What's up, folks? We're here today because I've got a problem, and Storybook's going to help. Let's check it out. So here's an application that I'm working on right now. I'm actually assigned to a ticket to fix some issue with a button that we were looking at. Unfortunately, to get to that button, I actually have to memorize how to get there. So to get to this button in particular, I have to go to the dashboard, and then to buttons, and then we're looking at this counting button that we're trying to fix. So I know how to get to this button, but for any teammate that might be reviewing my PR or who I might be talking to about how to implement this feature, they might not know how to get here immediately. And this particular example isn't that egregious. I've definitely been in larger apps before where in order to get to a specific feature, you actually have to log into a very specific kind of user and go through a very specific sequence of events in order to get to a specific component or to get some certain kind of behavior to happen. And in those cases, even if I'm working by myself, it would be a lot nicer to be able to have something where I have isolated the component that I'm looking at so I can just focus in on the work that needs to be done for the ticket and leave all the rest of the context about what's going on with the rest of the app just behind. This is where Storybook can really shine. Let's take a look at how our app is structured. If we look inside of this main.tsx file, it's actually pretty massive. There's a lot of stuff going on here. A lot of it actually has to do with the routing. We're using Tanstack Router for this. You may have noticed the dev tools down here when we were looking at it before really cool stuff here, but that's not our focus right now. We're actually just concerned with the button. So if I come to VS Code here, one of the tools that we have from NX built out of the box is the project graph. So I'm going to open up my project graph and we can see we're actually structured pretty nice here. We have a web app and then we have a library here for our UI components. If we take a look inside of that UI component, we can see that we have our nice self-contained counting button here. Now, because this is just an example, this is actually the only component that we have inside of this library. But keep in mind that there might be more here because the next step that we're going to do is we're going to run an NX generator here in order to add Storybook to our UI component library. So now that I've found the generator, I'm going to select the project. I want to add this to our UI components project. And I want to make sure here two things. I want to make sure the generate stories option is turned on. And I want to make sure that the interaction tests option is turned on. We'll see more about interaction tests in a little bit. But let's hit generate here. And once our generator is done running, we can actually take a look at our file system and we'll see Storybook has been added to our component library. So one of the things we can see is there's the Storybook directory here. That's going to contain most of the config here around Storybook. And we'll also see right here in the library, there's a stories file here that was generated specifically for our counting button. Now, like we said, if there had been other components here, we would have actually generated these stories for each one of those components as we went, which is a really great way of getting a lot of that boilerplate out of the way when you're looking to introduce Storybook to one of your UI component libraries. So another thing that Storybook did for us was generate inside of our project JSON some new targets here that we can run. The most interesting one is probably this new Storybook tab. So we can run it just by clicking on this button inside of our project.json file, or we could also just open a new shell. And here we can run NX Storybook UI components. And just like that, we've got our Storybook instance set up. Let's go ahead and click on the link. And here we can see our component is perfectly isolated here inside of this counting button. If we look on the left hand side here, we can actually see that by adding stories to this component, we're actually adding more links and these act like different scenarios that our counting button can be in. But as we can see here, we've completely isolated our counting button, which was the goal all along. But now let's take things one step further even. Remember in our original application here, it was kind of difficult to get to exactly where our button was. And like we had mentioned earlier, this makes things difficult for if we're sharing this with a teammate or just difficult in terms of splitting my focus and adding more friction to getting the work I should be focused on. But there's also the issue of getting to this specific feature when I'm trying to gain confidence in my application and specifically the work I'm doing right now. I could write an end-to-end -end test that's kind of navigating myself to this specific button, but you're kind of wasting cycles there just by figuring out all the different steps it takes to get here, setting everything up. Uh, you don't want to mess with that. So this is where interaction testing comes into play. We can see actually here inside of the heading story, if we open up the bottom panel here, there's actually an interaction that was already specified for this specific heading, along with the test associated with it. And if you look at what we're seeing right now, this test is failing. And if we look at why, we can see that we're expecting it to say, welcome to counting button. Uh, that was just the boilerplate that was generated for us. Let's go back to our code here. And we're going to look at rewriting these stories to something that makes more sense for our counting button. All right, so a quick fast forward there, but what we actually added was here a new story called count test. 
If we come back to storybook running in the browser here, we can see that, well, this is already actually passing. But what this is going to do is via this play method here that we defined inside of the story, we're actually automating some interactions with the specific component. So here we're getting our button and then we're writing some assertions that the text matches what it should be before we've clicked it. Then we'll click it and then after it's done being clicked, we're going to assert that the button's text has been updated appropriately. And if we scroll down here, we can see we also have a right click test here because part of the requirements of this button is if we were to right click it, the counter should actually decrement instead of increment. So in this case, we're going to run very much the same thing, only this time rather than saying I've been clicked one time, it should now say I've been clicked negative one times. And then we finally have a many clicks test that's actually going to go through click it 10 times and then right click it four times and at the end of all that, we should see it should be clicked six times. Coming back to the application, here we can see our right-click test is working as expected and our many clicks test is working as expected. So Storybook has always been a great option for isolating a component. With the new introduction of interaction tests in Storybook 7, it makes that story even bigger because now we can start introducing confidence in the behavior R components right here inside of Storybook, which is really streamlining a flow that we've used a lot in the past. In previous versions of the Annex Storybook plugin, we've actually supported this kind of functionality already. However, the way we were running this was we were standing up a storybook instance, much like we're doing right now. But then after storybook was stood up, we then run a separate Cypress process in order to make assertions that our storybook was behaving as we expected it to. And there's just some jankiness there in terms of selecting items inside of this iframe and the native API that storybook now supports for interactive testing, I think works a whole lot better. And it's really cool to see this come through. But let's actually add that functionality we were talking about at the beginning in order to see the power of all this stuff integrated together. So the ticket that I got for this counting button is actually to provide an initial value for the counter. We can see right now we actually don't accept any props on the counting button. Instead, we always just start our counter at zero. So because this component is fairly full featured already, it's already working, we're just adding another feature on top. I'm actually going to create a story to start this. This is actually kind of using a TDD approach. I don't always advocate for this, but this seems like a decent enough use case for it. So we're going to come down to our stories file and here, let's just copy our many clicks test for now. And instead of calling this a many clicks test, let's call this an initial count story. So for this story, we're going to add an args property. And here we're going to say initial count, and let's just say 10. So inside of here, we can kind of clean this up a little bit. Uh, we can get rid of most of this. And instead we'll say, I've been clicked 10 times. And then rather than expecting the inner text, let's just expect our button to be truthy. Now, if we come over to Storybook, we'll see our initial count was already added here. And we can see that our story is actually failing because I haven't implemented the feature yet. But this is great because now I can come back to my code. We can open up our counting button in here. We can implement that feature. So here's my implementation of this. We can see we simply added some props. And then when we called our use state hook, we initialized it with the initial count. Now you'll notice actually, if I open up my file system, we can see uh, our stories file actually turned red here. And this was because I actually had a typo here on my arguments. So it's really cool to see this sort of type safety come into play with our stories. We can see all I did was misspell our initial count here. But as soon as we hit save here, we should be able to come back to our storybook story. And here we can see, first of all, we have pretty much a fully interactive playground here where I can keep messing with this button even after the automated interactions have played out. But we can also see here that the assertions I had inside of that play function passed. So it's really cool to be able to kind of insert this confidence directly inside of the scaffolding of Storybook, which is allowing us to isolate these components and also helping people to discover the components that are available to them. So really cool to see this new interactive testing feature out of Storybook 7. Be sure to check it out. Be sure to check out the NX Storybook plugin to easily scaffold these things out so you don't have to worry about any of that friction. You can just get right to being productive. Thanks for watching y'all. Keep working hard and we'll see you next time. Peace.